So today we're going to be looking at simultaneous equations again. But this time we're going to be looking at a few more interesting sort of equations. I want to talk about graphically solving for interesting things. For example, if I have some line y equals mx plus c, and let's say I've got some kind of cubic ax to the 3 plus bx squared plus cx plus d, the question is, when do these two hit? How many times do they hit? Basically, what's it going to look like? So let's do some test cases. Let's draw the um, cubic first. Alrighty, so I could draw a line in a number of ways. If I draw it, say, across like this, you would see that you'd only get one solution. But that's because of where I drew the line. Theoretically, if I'd drawn the line just a little bit higher, ooh, I've got to nail the spot. Theoretically, if I'd drawn it a little bit higher, I might have gotten only two solutions. Slightly higher than that, I'm going to get three solutions. Okay? So we can kind of have a look at how many different solutions could we actually get to these sorts of problems. And just remember, whenever we're talking about simultaneous, we're always talking about an x and a y coordinate. So when I talk about one solution, that's both an x and a y component to that. This leads us to ask some interesting questions. Like, for example, y equals 3x minus 2 and y equals uh, 5x to the 3 minus 2x squared plus 8. When do these two things intersect? Do they intersect? Does it have to intersect? That's a really interesting question. And the answer is there's two different ways that you can go about doing it. Option number one, we can try and algebraically play with it. Today, we're going to be looking at graphical solutions. And in order to do this, we're going to do this in two different ways. I'm going to have a play on Desmos, and then we're also going to be having a look in our calculators. So let's try and actually solve this. Alrighty, so step one, let's just type in the two equations we've got. Oh, sorry, Desmos is just restarting. So we're going to have y equals 3x minus 2, and y equals 5x to the 3 minus 2x squared plus 8. And as we see visually, it might be a little bit hard to see, but you can actually see here that they pretty much miss each other past a certain point, and going the other way, they also miss each other. So there's only really one point in which they do intersect, and that point is at negative 1.283, negative 5.849. And that would be an example of a graphical solution to the problem. So there's only one solution. And that one solution is negative 1.283, negative 5.849. Now, obviously, these are approximate. There's probably a lot more decimal places after that. But this gives us a pretty easy way of doing this. Alrighty. But we can't just ask that about. Um, you know, a linear equation and a cubic. Let's try visually thinking about some other ones. What if we had a cubic and a quadratic? Alrighty, well, once again, let's start with our cubic. And we're drawing a cubic in this particular way because it kind of allows us to see more options. So the quadratic could obviously hit in three different places, just the same. In fact, it could also do the same thing as the linear function and only hit one or it can hit in 2. Unfortunately, yeah, I don't think there is any way of actually managing to um, getting it to hit in more than um, three places. But you can have a play with it and seeing how many times you can get it to intersect. Um, but the maximum you're going to get is 3. What about a cubic and a cubic? Can we get any more solutions than that? So what if I put a descending one, I can... So that's also going to give me three solutions. And it doesn't really matter how you draw it. Obviously, you can draw it with getting, you know, a kiss here and then through like that. Um, so you can get two or one solution as well. But the kind of game is to kind of play around with that. In order to get more than three solutions, I'm going to have to bring in the quartic. And not even the basic quartic, I'm going to have to bring old big W themselves. Um, and actually, just due to growth rates, almost certainly we can get it to cross again like this. 
And so theoretically, you can get up to four solutions with a cubic and a quartic. And with two quartics, once again, so you're limited to only four solutions. So just kind of playing around with that idea. Alrighty. So in the next one, we'll do it with a calculator.